Hey everybody. It's Thursday and um, I'm trying out a new camera setup. So if I'm looking a little distracted, it's because I'm really curious if it's working. Um, it looks like I've got captions auto-generating, which is new. And I'm not exactly sure how to turn those off or on. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're great. Uh, but, um, okay, so the whole point of this is now I can switch between two cameras. And so I've got it set up and there won't be any weird wiggling as I go. I'm not quite sure if I've got the light set up uh, properly yet, but um, bear with me. I am, uh, I'm excited because uh, I'm thinking the quality of the video is gonna be better, that you're gonna be able to see um, uh, more detail in what I do and that it won't maybe split when I lift things up to show you. I don't know. These are the, these are, this is the dream. This is the dream. Anyway, so let's see what happens when I switch cameras. Ta-da! Ta-da! I think you are. <laughs> um, so now you can see, oh, let's see if I can do this without... Anyway, I've got some adjusting to do, um, obviously, but uh, let's see, that's crooked. Maybe I fix that. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead. I um, really, really enjoyed working big last week. And so um, I'm gonna do it again. And I just, some of you know, I have weird sized pieces of paper that I work with because I do, um, I do book binding for my kids' school. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work big again today, and um, which means that I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to tile my work onto it so it covers it all. And I'm trying to try, I'm going to try and get to the point where I get both the front and the back covered. And then I'm going to do a little something at the end that, um, again, if you're like, what do I do with it now? Hopefully we'll give you some ideas. Oh, I thought I was so prepared. Where's my brayer? Oh, I thought I had my good brayer out. I don't know where it is. Okay, so this is, not that this is a bad brayer, but I like, I've been really enjoying my, um, my Speedball Professional Rubber Brayer. It's got a little give to it, and it just, uh, I like what it does. All right. There's a little color. And now I'm going to put this down and what I'm going to do with this is just draw up some paint through it first. And then I'm going to um, brayer some more paint on it the way it is. That first paint I used was um, Jane Davenport's acrylic paints. I really love her colors. Um, it's one of her things, of course, her colors are She's known for her colors and the pretty, they're very pretty colors, let's just say that. Okay, so I just rolled on some color there, and now I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to pick it up um, randomly, so I'm going to use this to help so I don't get paint on my hands. For someone who loves getting paint on her hands, I sometimes don't love getting paint on my hands. So there's my first pull. I still have quite a bit left on the page, so, or the jelly plates, so I'm just going to pull a little more. Wait. Um, you can see I've got, I've got quite a bit on there. Let's see if I can't pick that up with it as a ghost print. This is uh, a fresco bougainvillea. I just restocked the shelves of this, so you should be able to come in and find whatever color you're looking for. You know that I love the frescoes. They, they dry to a sort of chalky finish, and they're great for this sort of thing because later on you can go back in and work on top of them again. And that is yucky. It's my hair. A little bit of my hair in there. All right, so I'm just gonna pick this up. I'm tiling again. I don't know about these closed captions. I don't know how to turn them off, but I don't know if they're getting it right. So that was the first print. This is my ghost print that I picked up. Um, I put too much of that pink on there, so now it's got it's gotten very vibrant. So I'm just going to use another piece of paper to pull 
this part off. See, that's the kind of print that I like. This is print. Hmm. This plate is being funny. I had quite a bit of paint left on my brayer, so I'm just going to brayer some of this down. Pick it up with this. Again. Just. Gears. I'm just grabbing colors from my um, my my paint box. I've got a basket full of stuff. Ooh, look at that! That's an intense purple. All right, I'm gonna do two things with this one. I'm going to throw this down and pick up through it with this. Get a little bit of a print that way. Barely, though. Hmm. And then I'm going to um, do it again on the other side. Let's see what I get if I do it this way. Oh, my table's wriggling. Sorry about that. So what happened there is that the, the stencil pulled up quite a bit of the paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up and see what I get. Well, that's kind of cool. I've got this sort of almost... I think of this sort of effect as almost like an anomaly effect when it happens, where you get the sort of shadow um, color on there. If we throw it in a little red. I'm hoping you guys can hear me. Not exactly sure, honestly, what's picking up the sound <laughs> with this new setup. If it's my camera and if it's My phone. Should probably check that, huh? I probably should. So this is just me you know, creating a little pattern on my jelly plate. And so if you missed, uh, it oh good, thank you, Kendall. Appreciate the feedback. Um, if you missed earlier what I said, I'm just coming in and I'm just trying to cover the paper completely, uh, like I did last week, but I'm going to do it a little differently this week. Have a little different focus. I do not know who is texting me right now. Sorry, everybody. Oh, paint. That paint on my fingers. <laughs> I don't actually go around sticking my paint, my fingers in my paint. So part of me is like, ah, I have paint on my fingers. Get it off right now. <laughs> um, but I do love getting paint on my fingers. So I'm. <laughs> All right, Kendall, thank you. I will read it later. I'm not worry. Okay. So right now I'm just trying to get coverage. And so, um, you know, I've got lots of layers. That green completely disappeared. So I think I might just see about throwing in just a band of green and not worry about. So sometimes when... You know, you're trying to pick up uh, just color and add contrast. You know, you just might go in and pull 
a bit like that, so you end up with a splotch. At least you can still see underneath it. But let's see what happens if I pull it up with this. Sometimes um, some of the more popular designers uh, in, uh, on Instagram, you know, and they pull a print to use as their background, the sort of messy print. And I'm always like, oh, that one's so pretty. Don't do that. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you end up with these great interactions sometimes on your, your sidekicks and your, your leftovers. And sometimes I like that better than, if, especially if I'm trying to get something on my plate and it's not happening. And then I look at my... My little sidekick, and I think, oh, it's right there. Why can't I get this to happen on the page? <laughs> like this, for instance. All right. So I'm getting sort of these, you know, shadowy uh, layers, basically, on in what I'm doing right now. And that's fine, that's kind of what I want. I want this sort of background color. Um, let's see, more and more. Yellow. Um, these, are, these are the little travel Liquitex basics that I sell in kits. They're great um, to take with you. You can throw a pack of them into your travel bag. And they're a lot of fun to have around. Um, I also have, uh, you know, the Jane Davenport's, and then I also have this brand that I'm just, that I've had for a while that I try in there, um, just to see what it's going to do. You can also see as, as I add layers how um, it can brighten or change the mood of a, a page that I'm working on, so um, I'm wondering, okay, so let's see. And you can't always tell what a color is going to do on a page, on the on the jelly um, plate. You know, you can put it down and you think, oh, that's really dark. But then when you get it onto your print, you think, oh, that's really visible. Or some of these paints. Look completely different on top of the other colors you have going on. All I'm doing right Yeah, can't tell. Can't tell from looking at it if you guys can see me or not. Um, I'm just filling my page now with uh, add-ons to, you know, add some visual elements. I'm using my favorite here. Um, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if my video stopped or if 
um, if you guys could still hear me and see me while it reloaded. And I don't know if that was because of my cameras or because of Facebook. Um, so, or my internet, maybe my internet went down. I don't know. That was weird. So I'm just layering in layers, layering in layers. I'm going to put in, um, this is my favorite one right now. I love the text of this one. I love the graphicness of it. This is a crafters workshop um, stencil. I've been using it a lot. If you've been watching my videos, you will recognize it. Okay, thanks Candice. Um, it's been so hard recently. The last couple weeks, everyone I know who casts live on Facebook has had issues. I had a whole class that the second half I couldn't watch because it disappeared while she was live. And so, you know, it's been a real struggle. Um, all right, so this is my full page. Uh, I'm gonna have to add a little bit there. This, so you know one thing I love to do is when I'm out of town, I go to art stores, local art stores. Um, there's one in a little town in New York near where my sister lives that I love to go to. And so I often pick up their sales, their sales paints. So some of these are just paints that I grabbed while visiting my sister in New York at the little art store in Rhinebeck, if you're curious, if you're upstate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes hopefully it's not long COVID and it gets over itself right okay so hopefully you're seeing the um the effect of all the different layers that I've put in so far um it's you know I've tiled onto this particular piece and then I've added some focal points and um yeah that's uh I kind of want, I don't know, let me try this. All right, so now I'm going to work on the other side. So that's one side. I'm going to work on the other side. I'm going to start by just pulling off some of this paint that's on my brayer and seeing what I pick up if I get anything. And I'm going to use this because the it's a little tacky to the touch. We'll do a little green. Oh, I need those. Oh, look at that bright green. Punch in the face. This sort of limey green is actually a great color to add um, uh, to, you know, pinky tones and yellowy tones because it's a nice compliment. So you can see they got some nice grungy bits off of that, just putting down paint and pulling it off, including a genuinely grungy piece. I'm actually gonna take that off. All right. Um, there's another uh, travel purchase picked up, it's this. I went to a genuinely, seriously hardcore turquoise phase last year, so I've got a lot of turquoises. Tur turquoise? Turquoise. Turquoise. <laughs> a lot of turquoise colors. So. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my extra piece and pull off some of this paint. And not worry too much about the chaos of the printing there. Mm, and I'm just going to pick it up the way it is, even though normally I would try to maybe cover with another color. Because right now I'm just trying to get down a lot of color to pick up to cover the page. 
That's kind of fun. Ooh, look how much paint I had left. Let's see if that picks up anything interesting. color these are on my wish list to bring in um the the herb holbein 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 acrylic colors matte i have the matte um the so flat goldens which i love i love goldens i think if you get me talking about paint i've talked about goldens because they're great and um uh, they're great value actually. They're more expensive when you buy them, but they the pigment load is so great uh, that they last and they last and they last. And so I hear something Kendall brought in for the, me to try to work with the other day. I remembered. Remember to do it. Let's see what that does. Page. I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> That's cool. Realistic. Let's see. I genuinely don't know what I was saying. If you can remember and want to remind me, great. I am um, blabbering. Let's lay this car down. This is why you should always clean your lids because the dry paint gets in the way of them closing properly and then you run your whole bottle. Contrast there. I think I might just pick this up and see what it does. Page. Water. Okay, a couple things. One, uh, look at the grunginess I got out of that. I pulled up, you know, lots of little ghost images in there. Ooh, it's, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, see, I don't know if that blurriness is Facebook or if it looks blurry to you. If it's just me, maybe it's my, um, my computer and its casting abilities. Oh, jiggling stuff. <laughs> I'm not cleaning my brayer in between paint loads, so I'm getting a lot of interaction with my tones. Very intentional. Ooh, like that. Like that a lot. Mm, I'm gonna be. Go bright with this last color. Put it down. Just right here. Like it. Now the paper is a little um, damp, and so you know it's warping a teeny bit under my hands. So this is this is just layers and blocks of color without any um, uh, anything else on it. So you know, not much in the way of stenciling or mark making. So I'm just going to do a couple, a little bit of that at work, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to switch gears and show you what I plan to do with this. The what do I do now phase of the of the project. This is upside down. 
I do want it to be backwards because I want the words to express themselves. Um, this is, uh, what's it called? D Dina Wakely, one of Dina Wakely's stencils. She just released a whole bunch of new stuff, um, which is all in order, of course. So if you like her style, check back in a few days, maybe a week or two, depends on how quickly they get it out the door for me. But I should have it in stock soon enough. All right, so I don't know if you can see what that did there. It's kind of fun. Gonna brayer off my brayer onto my sidekick piece that I've been looking at. Um, so I've got, I'm gonna do a little white accents on this side too because um, I feel like it needs it. So you can see, it lightens it up, it um, creates a little veil of color over the top. So I'm going to slow down just a little bit so you can see it, because I can't tell if it's focusing or not. That's where I am. And then what happens when you cover both um, uh, sides of a piece of paper, especially a nice thick piece of paper like what I'm using, you, um, it ends up kind of leathery, which is definitely part of the appeal. And this is just me, um, cleaning the, the plate. I don't know what's happening with this particular, this is just my extra sidekick piece of paper. But this is the piece of paper I've been working on intentionally. And you can see I've got now paint on both sides. So I'm actually going to put my jelly away. And I do put it back. I don't always put the plastic um, side pieces in, but I do always put it back in this case. I try to. I try to remember to do that. And clear some space a little bit here because I'm going to switch gears. Now, What's be beautiful about these cameras is that if I had been organized enough, I could have set up my second spot and have a third camera that I can just move to. Just like, poof, move to it. <laughs> um, but, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cut this up into manageable pieces. So this right now is 15. So I'm going to do seven inch pieces, seven and a half, seven. So I want to cut that. Um, I don't want this edge here. Not that it won't end up in my fodder box. All right, because that's a pretty cool piece of fodder now, double sided. Um, and then let's see, it is 12, so I'm going to take this down to 6. Is that what I want? Mm. 12, 4? Yeah, 4. So I've got 4 by 7 is what I'm working with right now. All right, now they're a teensy bit tacky um, to the touch. If I had my, if I could put my hand on my, well, there it is, but it's 
All right. There. I'm just going to get these a little drier. Just so they're not sticky. And you can see these are all the same, you know, piece. They're all cut from the same piece, and yet there, there's some significant differences in how um, they look, right? Based on what size I use and all that. So I'm gonna mix them up a little bit. I'm not gonna think too much about it. And then what I'm gonna do is bind them into a little book. Let me see, I really like that. I want that to be my front. So um, I'm going to start by folding them. It's going to be pocket journal size. Actually, I'm just going to fold them and over oh, that's mine. Sorry, the light is flashing. Whew, that was on my eyes. So I'm just folding them all in half with my bone folder. Uh, you could certainly use, um, I often use the piece that comes out of my um, folding, um, what's it called, scoring school, uh, scoreboard. So you can see now I have all of these pages and I can layer them into each other in ways that maybe interact. Okay, so now I have this little book. And I'm going to a little bit of um, this is wax linen thread I sell this here in the store and I'm going to cut some of it off and I'm going to pull out a needle I tend to use um, tapestry needles especially when it's something crafty and not so much a professional bookbinding uh, technique um, I do know how to professionally bookbind and it's long and tedious and so in the end, I usually do a more crafty version, which is basically what this is. But I am using a waxed linen, or this might be hemp, thread, very strong. And the wax helps it stay um, stiff, which you kind of want. And I'm just going to punch three holes straight through the spine. And I'm eyeballing it. If I were doing this more carefully or more professionally, I would have measured. And I'm putting all my pages in at once. And what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can get close now. I'm gonna go in the middle hole. I punched three holes. I'm gonna go in the middle one through every page that I have. I'm gonna go out one of the other holes. I'm gonna go all the way across down to the third hole and go in. So now I have this long stitch and a tail and I'm going to come out the first hole I came in at and but I'm going to come out on the other side of that stitch. So hopefully you guys can see and I'm going to pull them tight on the inside and tug them a little tight. Now this is nice stiff paper especially with all this paint on it so I'm not so worried about ripping. If you are using just regular paper and making a little pamphlet stitch like this, you want to be really careful that you don't pull up and buzz saw through your um, your paper because that just, you'll break your spine that way of your book. you break the spine of your book. So I'm just doing a little square knot, which is right over left, left over right. And 
There are a couple things I could do. I could leave this long and hang beads off the end, charms, things like that. I could trim it. I could uh, th thread it back in and wrap it around the inside and hide it that way. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna leave it. But now I have this little tiny book that I could add pictures to or quotes to. I could make it a little inspirational book where I put in words to inspire me during the day. I could put photographs. Or I could just admire it. Ta-da! Great. So that is it for me today. Um, I hope that uh, that the the little bobble we had there didn't mean that the um, that the video stopped. And uh, I hope that inspires you to do a little jelly printing yourself and to get your stuff out and um, and just to play around and hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with it at the end. So thanks so much for joining me today and I will hopefully see you soon. Stay safe everyone.